Hi, in this video I'm going to go through the various cartridge and label variations that are available for the Atari video computer system. The Atari is a really interesting system to collect for because it has so much history and because there's so many varieties of cartridges available for it. Launched in 1977, the launch titles came on the text numbered cart. These carts feature the number of the cart on the top label, so after 1977 this number is no longer on the carts. They also have the number on the face of the cart as well, so 26 being the part number of the Atari, 01 being the cartridge. They have all the different variations available in this game. The carts have this nice textured finish to them, make them a little bit grippy. And they have this very clever dust protection system. It has a little locked door. Prongs from the Atari itself go into these holes which unlock the door allowing the cartridge to go in. And these prongs unlock the dust cover on the Atari itself. So what were the launch titles? Well, here they are. You'll notice this rainbow theme happening. you also notice the numbers aren't completely sequential. That's because they're grouped. So the O whatevers are your combat games, 10s driving, 21 sports, 40 puzzle, 50 gambling, 60 educational. They didn't think the Atari was going to be around for as long as it did, so they didn't allow for as many games that actually were created for it. So they didn't stick with the system forever. The games that the Atari hardware were actually designed around was Tank, which became Combat, and Pong, which became Video Olympics. After 1977, so from 1978 to 1980, they went onto their text label. Pretty much exactly the same as the text numbered, with the obvious difference being they no longer had the number on the top. There are some other slight differences. So the Atari logo is smaller on these newer labels uh, and the cart number is no longer under the logo, it's under the uh, heading. There was a font change in 1980. This card actually has both fonts. So the, this is the uh, old font with the straight E's and then this is the newer font with the E at an angle. Sears released games for the Atari and the actual Atari units themselves under the Telegames label. This is their design of their text label, so obviously the same game. Slightly different design, well significantly different, but the, the information is the same. A little bit more colour, but same cartridges, same dust cover, same textured, same same. From 1981 to 1988, they went onto the box art black label. So these feature the box art of the game uh, and a font change. The color of the labels sometimes matched what they were previously, and sometimes they just changed it. Like in this, it's not red on this one; it's blue. Really nice design. Still have the box, the, the cartridge number on the top. Sears had an equivalent. So almost exactly the same, different color choices, but with Sears Telegames rather than Atari on the cartridge. From light 1982, they went on to the silver label. So before this, the boxes were kind of the same. But now they came in these silver boxes. This is the first time they started referring to the Atari video computer system as the Atari 2600 because the Atari 5200 came out and they needed to distinguish between the two systems. The top label were all red now rather than the variety of colors and then yeah, silver rather than the black finish, slightly smaller picture, but really quite a nice design. They went after that from 1986 to 1990 onto the burgundy label. This is the tail end of the system. White text. Uh, cost savings involved, they don't no longer have the dust cover. So they're just trying to eke out the last dollars out of the system with this last sort of push for the Atari 2600. They also had a children's series of games which feature this grid pattern, white text, 
with a picture on the front. The color of the cartridge corresponds to the franchise that they are supporting. So in this case, this is blue for Walt Disney. So it was yellow for Sesame Street, purple for Muppets, red for Peanuts, and then blue for Walt Disney. There were two one-off cartridges designs, if you can call them that. There was the black picture label. Obviously it doesn't have a picture, but this came out with uh, this series of cartridges. Poor old Starship was, was not a very good game and so it didn't really sell very well. So they were basically discontinuing it. So they made a new label, but they really didn't care enough about it to uh, put a picture and actually design it properly. So this is the only game that came out on this plain black sort of a crossbreed between the picture label and the text label. And then the last cartridge type was the 32-in-1. This features this bright, bright label with just text. It features 32 different games from Atari, Activision, Convid, um, US games. No top label. And you picked your game by basically switching this computer on and off again, and it would pick a random game. Everything about this kind of screams that it's a, it's a dodgy knockoff, but it is actually a legitimate cartridge. It even contains some hack games on it, so it has the proper version of Fishing Derby, but then it also has a Fishing Derby with hacked graphics where you're catching crabs rather than fish, and a freeway where you're a rabbit rather than a, a um, chicken, but yeah. Legitimate, but dodgy as hell looking Atari cartridge. The next publisher I want to look at is Activision. Activision was formed in 1979 by former Atari programmers that weren't happy with the conditions at Atari and they went on to form the very first third party publisher. Their first sort of standard cartridge type featured white text with these screen mock-ups, so it's not as fanciful as the Atari images. It actually shows you an image that's quite close to what the actual game looks like. On the back, they have their Activision name. You can read. They have this, these ridges on here to make it easy to grip. So they, most of these companies seem to think it was quite difficult to grip on cartridges, so they did some engineering to make it easier. Uh, and they also have these slots and little groove things for them to interlock with each other. Uh, the other style of cartridge was their picture label cartridges, which featured art from the actual box itself. So a little bit more fanciful in terms of their what they're saying is in, in the game, although Hero is a very good game, probably one of the best games on the Atari. Um, and the not as standardized with their text. I know this one looks boring because it's just uh, plain, but the actual box itself, the Commander, was just a, a green box. Again, no dust cover, but apart from that, the cartridges are exactly the same. You might notice that the quality of some of these labels, in fact, almost all, most of the labels, is quite poor. It looks like you've put your Atari right next to a deep fryer or something. This is actually because of some bad glue choices, it's the glue seeping through. And you might also notice this one looks quite good. The reason for that is this is actually a Hess cartridge. So if you look at the back, this one, the one with the bad label has Activision on it. This one has this sort of generic sort of square, doesn't actually say Activision. It is a legitimate cartridge, but it's published by Home Entertainment Supplies, which is a company that uh, publishes other uh, companies work in it. It's an Australian company, but there are equivalents in Europe and whatnot. Uh, so this one was printed by them. And I think if I look at these cartridges, I think this one is, yeah, this one's Hess and this one's Activision. There were also, uh, so Hess also released their own game. So they published for uh, Atari, uh, sorry, Activision. I think they did Parker Brothers. Well, I know they did in, in Magic, but they actually came out, out with their own game as well, My, Go My Golf. Standard Activision cartridge, still has the slots, everything about it's exactly the same, but it's a, a Hess game rather than a Activision game. Other companies released on the Activision cartridges as well. We have Absolute Entertainment, 
which was formed by former Activision programmers. They released this Tomcat game. They had more more games as well. Again, standard Activision cartridge without obviously Activision on it because it's not written by Activision. Same interlocking interlocking system. This is actually a very impressive game. Like they went made a flight simulator on the Atari, which is basically impossible. They actually kind of pulled it off. It's a, a quite a playable game. TNT software also released on Activision cartridges. I think this is pretty much their only game. They have a plain text version of this as well, but yeah, this one's obviously a bit nicer. Uh, and Epics. Epics released a whole lot of sports games. This isn't their budget <laughs> version. This is just all their, their carts are on this plain text without an image. Um, you can get them. You can get a red one with white. Uh, writing and a gold one with black writing, but they're all basically the same. Uh, they made these multi-event sports games for the Atari. They, they released them on other systems as well. This one's quite well regarded. They made more of a name than themselves on the Comedy 64 where they released Barbarian and Impossible Mission uh, for the Comedy 64. Quite well known and well regarded games. There are also budget labels for Activision. These are Hess releases. So they're in te on plain text, bright colours with white writing. Normally there's multiple games on them, but some, they often released one-offs as well, so just it's still one game on it, but a budget version, so it's cheaper and cheaply produced and you know, cheaper on the shelf, so on the sort of tail end of their life. Uh, Activision also released their own text version as well. I don't think we got these in Australia, at least I don't really remember seeing any in Australia. So this has got the Activision label on it. These also came out uh, with blue writing, sorry, blue cut, uh, label with white writing and a black label with white writing. I'm not going to cover most many of the budget labels because they're not very interesting, um, but this uh, a, lot, a lot of them ended up coming out on Hess as well in this sort of format. The next developer I want to look at is Imagic. Magic was founded in 1981 by Atari and Mattel expatriates and they had two major cartridge types. They had the text, oops, I might do it the other way so you can actually read it, and the uh, picture labels. They had these little shelves on their cartridge with their logo on the bottom, the Magic, and then also on the back. Uh, no dust cover, no locking system, interlocking system. Uh, this is probably, not probably, it is my favourite uh, picture art of a cartridge. It, they, they sort of they got themselves a little plastic Tyrannosaurus, glued some jet engine parts on the on its back and spray painted it at silver and hey presto, you've got the world's best cover art for a, a game cartridge. Very cool. Parker Brothers were one of the more successful publishers for the Atari, releasing around 18 games. And they had quite a good batting average in terms of the quality of their games. They released on these really interesting angular pyramid-y sort of cartridges. A nice embossed logo on the back. Really an interesting design with the, the ridges on the edge, lots of angles. One of my favourite designs for the Atari. Milton Bradley tried their hand at making Atari games. I imagine the board game manufacturers are a little bit nervous about the new technology of video games compared to their board games, so they all sort of had a go at it. Uh, they only released a few games, all on the same cartridge type, the smooth cart. I don't think they made much of an impact, um, but quite a nice cart, this weird cutout. Uh, no interlocking system. No grip, uh, but still quite a nice design. This is a sort of a 3D uh, game, reasonable game. Not a bad effort for their first run in, in video games. CBS released games for the Atari on these grey and sometimes black cartridges. Very similar to the Activision cartridges. They've got the grip, um, but they're not recessed like the Activision ones and there's, there's less, it's not exactly the same, but very similar. They have the same interlocking system. It's got the same ridges, so they interlock. Uh, 
Sega also released with this on this cartridge type, same as the uh, SBS cartridges, typically black. And this one's with, in conjunction with them, Sega and SBS. Now this is actually quite a good uh, version of Carnival, considering the limitations of the Atari. They got quite close to the arcade game, although it's a fairly simple arcade game. Sega also released on these grippy carts. So they got these much bigger grippy ridges. As I said, they were really seem to be super worried about people not being able to hold on to these carts. Also, much nicer design. In the, they've got the Sega on the back. Sega. Uh, these were also used by American Video Game. They published this one game, Tax and Voiders, uh, on the grippy Sega cartridge. Obviously, it doesn't have Sega on the back. Uh, yeah. This is not as rare as you'd think it'd be. You'd think they would have sold two internationally, like who wants to play Tax Avoiders as a video game? Uh, but it's not super uncommon, kind of an interesting little collectible. Coleco, originally a leather goods company that came out, also came out with the Cabbage Patch Kids, uh, released games for the Atari. They came out on these creamish cartridges. It's got grippy ridges, a shelf. Again, dealing with the, the terribly complicated problem of pulling cartridges out of the machine. A Coleco on the back, again no dust cover. Just showing you the complexities of the industry back then, we also have Carnival by Sega on, Coleco, on a Coleco cart, whereas it's also on an SPS cart, like what's going on there, obviously the same game. And they also have Donkey Kong by a little company known as Nintendo, made a version of it for Atari. Not a great version, but you know, there you go, it's just the Atari. And now my favorite cartridges, not for the games, but for the cartridges themselves. Tiger Vision, dun dun dun. I like them because of the varying colors. Even their basic design is, is quite uh, uh, standing out, so it's got a nice uh, ridge pattern there. But that kind of blue. These ridges, ridges on the other side for grippy grippy. Tiger Vision on the back, so you know who they are. And uh, they do have an interlocking system. Interlocky, interlocky. Is it Activision compatible? Let's have a look. Yay, it is in Activision compatible. Uh, the only ones I knew of back in the day, uh, Jawbreaker is very highly regarded. It's like a simple, a simpler than Pac-Man, Pac-Man. Um, but because it's simple, it really works well on the Atari, so it's a very well-regarded game. Uh, Miner 249er is, was available on most systems, and the Atari version, as a platformer, like Atari is a terrible system to play platformers on. This one's pretty good for the Atari, not not pretty good for a platformer, but pretty good for a platformer um, on the Atari. I mean, you've basically got Pitfall if you want to, and Pitfall 2 if you want an actual good platformer on the Atari. And uh, yeah, these two are good. This is kind of a rip-off of uh, Donkey Kong. One of the, the, the more obscure uh, brands, but I really like their cartridges. Their cartridge art is really cool. And I like the, the varying of the, the colors and so forth. Very cool. US Games was a company that made handheld electronic games. In 1981, they started making video game software. And then in 1982, they were bought out by Quakers Oats to develop Atari games. They originally launched their games under the Vidtech label, with these plain black labels with a screenshot mock-up on the front. This game is a hide-and-seek game, if you can imagine. They have a grip on the side. Make it easier to pull the cart out. and these notches missing on the back. Not sure what that's about. There were only three games released under the Vidtech. They went on to change to US games for their labels. Exactly the same cart design, screenshot on the front, black label, missing gap, grip on the side. And look at these two, they're almost identical in terms of how they're, they're created. And they went on to their red, white and blue carts. So they had their standard cart, which the actual physical cart itself is exactly the same as their old one, except they have this red, white, and blue color scheme. 
with some box art rather than the screenshot mock-up. Uh, and then they have their handled carts, which have this nice handle at the front. It has an interlocking system, not compatible with the Activision one, but still kind of cool. Another manufacturer that had those carts was Amiga. They developed three different games, but only released one on the Atari. Uh, this one, uh, Mohill Maniac. Uh, as you can see, it does interlock with US games. If you're wondering whether there are any relation to Commodore Amiga, they are. Amiga Corporation was founded by Jay Miner, who developed the custom chips for the Atari 2600. He formed another company to start developing a new console slash computer system, uh, the Amiga. The designs were licensed out by Atari, which went on to create the Atari ST based on the designs. And then Commodore bought out Amiga and then used his designs to create the Commodore Amiga. So J Minor basically designed the first chips for the first popular console and then went on to develop the chips for the first multimedia computer. A very significant person in the history of computing. US Games also had their games published by Carrier Video in Europe. Carrier Video is a French company. Uh, so in Europe they re released the US game. So MAD is a US game. Um, Carrier Video is the publisher. They released them on these Tiger Vision carts. So very complicated, convoluted history of the, all these games. And for some weird reason, they decided to put their name on the, the top of the cartridge rather than the name of the game. Anywho, that's US games. 20th Century Fox were keen to get into the video game industry in a hurry. So they licensed their first games from Cyrus. These games came out with these red labels. They kind of started with budget labels rather than finishing with them. With white, white text, uh, screenshot mock-up, much the same as your Activision cartridges. Uh, got some grips on the side. No logo. They do have an interlocking system, but it isn't compatible with the Activision cartridges, but they are compatible with their own carts. Then they went on to uh, making games for their own IP. So they've got games for their movies, like Flash Gordon, and then for their TV shows like MASH. There was a, a MASH video game. This is quite a well-regarded game. Spectrovision, another American company founded in 1981, made games for the Atari with these lovely silver labels, quite detailed cartridges. They've got their logo and the, the, the grab handle at the front and also on the back on this textured finish they have Spectrovision. They do have a dust cover but it's not a complicated one like the Atari so dust would actually get into it. It's just a simple little push. It doesn't have the door on it. Uh, they ch originally were called Spectrovision and then for some reason they changed their name to Spectra Video. Same carts, but they've obviously the the detailing is different, so now it's Spectra Video. I'm not sure why they changed the name. I actually think Spectra Vision is a better name, but there you go. Spectra Vision or and or Spectra Video. That's what their carts look like. Do, do, do. Do, do, dun, 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 dun. The Star Path Supercharger, the grippiest of all grippy cartridges. Strictly speaking, not a game, but it did come with a game, Phaser Patrol, my favourite ripoff of Star Raiders. Uh, the games were loaded using this phone jack, which is attached to the cartridge. So the games came on cassette and they were loaded onto this cartridge, which is a memory expansion. It has six kilobytes of memory on it. So the normal Atari, I assumed it was named after the amount of RAM it had, 2600, which would make sense with the computers at the time. But the Atari only has 128 bytes of RAM. And so this expanded that hugely, which meant the game, the console was more flexible in terms of the games it could play. If you want to see the difference, have a look at the cartridge version of Frogger, which is a very good game, and then the Starpath Supercharger licensed version of Frogger, which is far superior. It also could load multiple parts of the game, so games like Dragon Stomper, 
loaded the first part of the game and you played and then when you wanted to actually go on and fight the dragon it would load up the next section of the game so you could have a lot more memory and a lot more flexibility in how you devel developed and delivered your game the star path supercharger now let's just do a bit of a mix of publishers konami famous for their arcade games released a few games for the atari on these cartridges a little bit tapered in the in the middle of the cart a bit of a rough edge no dust cart as per usual they made this game they made strategy x and a marine marine wars or something like that was their third game um, not bad looking cartridges another interesting cart was from the publishers bomb they released about four or five games for the atari all of their carts look pretty much exactly the same. They have this grippy edge to them. Uh, so a grip part of it. This nice texture here. A really nice embossed logo on the back. Bomb. But in terms of the colour um, and the fonts, um, they all look pretty much exactly the same, obviously with different titles on them. But apart from that, they are, once you've seen one, you've seen them all. These are fairly rare. I didn't pay much for this one, but uh, I think they're a little bit less rare in the power regions. But they are quite a rare cartridge, but obviously it's still not expensive because people don't really care too much about Atari. Avalon Hill, another board game manufacturer, got into the video game market. I really like their carts. They're, they're tapered towards the end. And then they have this... Uh, these ridges going down the full length of the cartridge kind of an unusual uh, design for a cartridge quite unique these are quite rare uh, this is one of the least rare of the, the ones that they made which is why I got it because it's cheaper um, so a little bit harder to get hold of if you're interested in having a look at one of these games the last one which I kind of um and ah about whether or not I was going to include it uh, was telegames they published other people's games on these silver labels. It might be hard to see that this is silver. It might look a bit like white on the screen. Um, but the fact that it was silver made it interesting enough. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll include uh, this publisher as well. So I've got the grippy grippy, kind of similar to Activision carts, the cutouts that a lot of the manufacturers, I really would like to know why they did that. But quite a few of them have these cutouts in them. Uh, this one you can actually see into the, the car itself, some of the, the um, circuitry of the, the ROM board. don't know why that was happening. Um, not to be confused with this telegames. This is Sears with the, um, the hyphen. That, these are actually two different companies. Um, this is a, a, not, not Sears, it's a, another company which mostly publishes other people's games. Games by Apollo was a company that originally made educational videos and they wanted to get into the game making market they wanted to be the next Activision and they spent a lot of money to try and do that but they never really hit the same heights uh, their cartridges feature this beautiful 1950s sci-fi style artwork I really love the artwork on their, these cartridges they've got a grippy grippy on the side and a nice embossment of their name on the back games by Apollo. They made some good games. The original cartridges uh, basically look like this. Not super standardized, so the colors varied and the uh, fonts varied and the, the colors around the cartridge. Uh, but then they went into this standardized version, which I don't like as much, not as, not as big a picture and a little bit same samey. Um, same cartridge, exactly the same. Apollo on the back, uh, but with this blue standard color scheme. Not ugly by any means, but not as cool as the original. Some of their games are good, some of them not so good, um, but they were not Activision. Data Rage was a Californian-based video company uh, developed for the Atari in the mid-80s. Sort of a little bit Parker Brother-ish design, sort of. They got their logo on there. I can see the logo a little bit easier on the top. Data Rage. I uh, don't know much. I haven't actually played much of the, many of their games, but they've got their again logo at the top as well here. 
ridgy ridgy to, to, for the grip. Uh, journey, as in the band Journey. Um, journey was into video games for some reason. They released a really weird arcade game, and this game is, is, is very weird as well. Um, not necessarily good, but um, yeah, weird. But um, probably the worst cartridge designs in the world. But kind of interesting. Now, a couple of oddball designs. We have Computer Magic Video, which released six games between 1981 and 1983. They come in these odd long cartridges. So here's a standard Atari card, much shorter. These are fairly rare, so they're hard to get hold of, which is why my copy isn't isn't the best, because I didn't want to pay much money for it. Uh, but they're very interesting cartridge. Can't comment on the game quality, I can't honestly say I've played their games. The next one is Onox or Zonox, which is a division of KTEL. This is a less common the single cartridge type is their sort of less common. Really kind of cool design, very grippy on the side. I do have their logo embossed on it. So very nice design, but they were more well known for their double carts. These are typically pretty cheap, and it was a two for one. So basically, Plug it in this way, you've got Chuck Norris, turn your cartridge around, plug it in this way, you've got Artillery Jewel. Very common cartridge, I had one of these back in the day, but I didn't have this particular one. Nice design. Telesis, another developer for the Atari, made six games all in 1982 before they went out of business, because of the crash I imagine. Uh, have two major cartridge types, they've got their basic version, with the grip goes all the way around. No logo, slightly textured, kind of novel artwork. And then they have their more interesting sort of beveled handled case. So it's got a handle on the edge, grippy grippy. It's a little bit cheaper made, like it's thinner plastic, but it's a bit more interesting a design. And it does, this one does actually have their logo on the front. But Short run, but they made a few games at least. Uh, John Sands, yes, as in the uh, card maker, <laughs> came up with some games as well. So it's everyone wanted to get into the card manufacturing industry. I really like their artwork. Uh, like it's got a bit very Office 97 word art feel about it. Like there's some tackiness that I quite like about it. Like it looks like you've just whacked it together with, with old clip art and word art, which obviously didn't exist back then, so someone did design it. So, but I really like the design. Uh, very similar again to Activision with the grippy grippy and grip on the back, and again with these slots. Really not well manufactured, like their, their little prongs to open the system were too thin, and so like this one's broken. And you, you need, like, if this one, this broke, this is half broken, so if that breaks, then you can't actually plug it into a cartridge, into a machine. Um, yeah, just not well made. Um, you can just feel that it's thinner. It's a unusual that they cheap out on just a little bit of plastic. But I like the designs of them. They're, they're kind of cool looking cartridges. Uh, M Network, as in Mattel, also released games for the Atari. These are the ugliest uh, cartridges. So Mattel Incorporated. Can you read that? Or M Network. So it, Mattel made the Intellivision a competing console, but they also made games for the Atari. The uh, Intellivision's cartridges were smaller than the Atari, so what they've done here is they've used the Intellivision mold and then got this little adapted look thing to stick on the end of the cartridge so that it can use them in an Atari. Ugly design. No, the labels haven't fallen off this, they just didn't have labels, they didn't come with labels, they just have the top label saying what the game is. The games themselves are good or bad, like they're, some of them are good and some of them are bad, um, but the cartridges are ugly. Uh, you can get ones with a silver um, label. These are in TV. They purchased the rights um, to M Network Games and published them themselves with a, a white label rather than a blue label. But apart from that, they're exactly the same. So yeah, these are my least favorite looking cartridges. Although they're kind of interesting in their ugliness. Uh, last and kind of least, we'll go on to some of the sort of dodgier brands. So we've got uh, Bit. Yeah, they actually did publish some of their own games. It's a Taiwanese company. Uh, grippy Grippy, Missing Slots. I'm not sure whether this is their own game, but I think it might be. Don't 
don't know whether they actually created this artwork or not, or the logo on the front. They also released these multi carts, which is kind of cool. Sort of a, a sign of the era, like you've got physical switches to pick which game you want to be, and you're not, you have to do it while the game's off. So it's basically kind of in line with the um, name of the company bit that you've got bit switches to pick which game that you want to do. But this, um, this one is definitely a, a rip off of an Activision game, Eskimo um, Jump. Uh, then we have Rainbow Tech, Rainbow, sorry, Rainbow Vision, Sun Tech, also known as Sun Tech. Um, and some fun cartridges. So I got this one because it was cheap. It was almost nothing. Um, but Pac Kong, you know, why wouldn't you want a game that's both Pac Man and um, Donkey Kong at the same time? A lot of these are like hacks of games, or um, yeah, or they're, or they're their own game, but then they're, they're not very good. Grippy. The actual cartridges are very well made. Like they're very um, thick, good plastic, grippy. Um, SS on the back, probably not the best thought out name for a company. And they've actually got dust covers. There's only one other manufacturer. I imagine Atari lice, like um, patented their, their dust covers, which is why the other companies didn't ever try to do it. Whereas you know, this company doesn't care. <laughs> they're, they're, they're already doing dodgy stuff. And then you've got your full on pirate carts. They come in these V V cartridges, so Condor Attack. They wouldn't really own Condor, Condor Attack. It's not a very good game, um, but kind of cool looking cart. And then super pirating cartridges literally have a pirate cove on the cover. Um, yeah, so you can even back in the cartridge days, uh, you could get pirated games. And that is all I wanted to cover in terms of Atari cartridge variations. Thank you very much for listening.